Hey, I downloaded a bunch of images from Pixabay so that I could work on our propaganda poster and show you some techniques. Let me just show you one thing about Pixabay. Um, the image that you were just looking at, this one, um, is if I wanted to do a poster perhaps on the problems with too much alcohol, right? Becoming an alcoholic. So I did a search on pixabay.com for alcohol. And what I want to show you about this is be sure to stay away from the top row of images. You can see these are sponsored images and they cost money. Below, these are the free ones. So I downloaded uh, this image in case I want to do a poster about alcoholism. This one in case I want to do a poster about drugs. Maybe I want to do a poster about the importance of marshes in terms of cleaning up polluted water. Maybe I want to do a poster about traffic and buying electric cars. Maybe I want to do a poster about the planet Earth, that we need to save our planet. So all of these images came from Pixabay. Maybe I want to do a propaganda poster about uh, what I think about um, President Putin, President Biden, or former President Obama. So the main thing you need to know about working with images is that in this one, the background, for instance, it's not a bad background and it's blurry, so your attention doesn't go to it. But in the propaganda slideshow that I showed you, the images really stand out from their backgrounds. So I'm gonna show you how to isolate an image from its background. Photoshop has some great new tools. Over here behind the quick select tool, I'll choose the object selection tool. You can click any tool that has a little white triangle at the bottom of it. Means you can click and hold on it and you'll find tools underneath. So I'm gonna start with the object selection tool and I'm just gonna draw a box around my subject. And you'll see that Photoshop does a pretty darn good job of figuring out what I want. You can see up here, there's a little bit of a miss. So in order to fix that, I'm going to zoom in and grab underneath the object select tool, the quick select tool. So you can see it's a circle with a little plus. That's your brush. That brush can be made bigger with your right, right bracket key or smaller with your left square bracket key. So I'm just going to draw around his head and get that missing piece. Now that I feel good about my selection, I'm going to zoom back out. Command or Control Zero is a great way to get everything you have on your page. And then at the bottom of my Layers palette, I'll see a little icon that looks a bit like a camera. That's a layer mask. I'm going to create the layer mask with my object selected. And that means, you can see over here, a stencil was created that went on top of the image. The white part of the stencil is where my image is, and the black part is where they've blocked it out for me. Photoshop does a great job with that. And this is a way to work non-destructively, meaning I'm preserving my original image in case I need to go back to it. I'm going to duplicate this layer by typing Command J, Command or Control J, and now I have a copy of it. The reason I'm duplicating it is because I'm about to make some changes here to posterize this photograph, and I want to keep the original in case I don't like what I did. So here is my image. I'm going to just go to the Image drop-down menu, and under Adjustments, I'm going to choose Posterize. You'll see many different levels available. And if we look, for instance, at level one, that's level one of posterize. Look at level two. I'm not sure I like that very much, although it's kind of cool. Look at level three. I definitely don't like that one. Each level posterizes it a little less. Level four. Level five, I kind of like that one. Posterizing is a way of simplifying. Six, that's not bad. 
7. Now it's starting to look more like a photograph. I think I'll go back to 5, which I liked, and leave it at that. I'll click the OK button. And now I want to add a sunburst background. In order to do that, I'm going to build it in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to show you how I build it, and then I'll show you how I bring it in. So the first thing I'll do is just take a peek at the size of my image. I can right click on the ruler to make it inches or pixels or whatever I want. Inches is what I'm choosing. If you don't see your ruler, you can type Command or Control R to make them show. And I can see that it's over 26 inches wide and almost 18 inches tall. So now I know what size to draw my sunburst. I'm going to open up Illustrator and show you how to draw a sunburst. And let's see, what did I say? It was about 27. wide by 18 tall, I think. That's close, close enough because it's vector and we can change the size if we need to. All right, it's 26 by 18, you can see that. And now I'm gonna get my, this is the rectangle frame tool. Click and hold to get the ellipse tool. Hold shift and draw an ellipse in the middle of your artboard. So it's a perfect circle because I held shift and um, I'm going to make sure that the stroke is a black stroke and the fill, I would like for the fill to be nothing. Over here you can see stroke and fill represented there too. If I click on the fill and then click this red line, now my fill, as you can see, is nothing. I want the stroke to be about 200. Now you can see a big fat black circle. Actually, I think I'll make this one 300 maybe more, 400, yeah. Um, I just want a fat black line. And then on the stroke, I'm going to click here to get some options. I want it to be a dashed line. Now you can see my sunburst beginning to happen. Here I can choose how far apart the dashes are. I can see that these are a little tiny and close together, so I might choose 15. And then I might need to play with the gap a little bit and make the gap, uh, let's see about making it 20, almost even to the 35. And you can see here, this looks a little uneven right here. This is a bigger one. If you want everything to be even, there's this little second button here you click. And as I look at this, I feel like my gaps could be a little bit larger. So I might choose 30 for the gap. Yeah, that feels better to me. It's possible to stop right here if this is what you want, although this is not what I want. I'm going to close that box by just clicking. What I'd like to do is make these lines editable. So I need to go to my Object drop-down menu. While this is still selected, it's hard to believe this is the box, but as you can see with the stroke, I've chosen to align my stroke here, partially on the inside, partially on the outside. My circle is here, half of it is on the outside, half of it is on the inside. In order to close this middle, which is what I want to do, and I want to, I can only do that by making these shapes, these lines, editable shapes. So I'm going to go to the Object drop-down menu and choose Expand Appearance. And that did what I wanted it to do, but I need to expand it again so I can get the dialog box. So I'll go to Object and click Expand again. And I want to make sure both my fill and stroke are expanded. So I'll click OK. And now I have, you can see by the little blue lines around this, everything is editable. I'm going to deselect it. Then underneath my Direct Selection tool is the Lasso tool. If I draw a little circle around this area, then just the interiors are selected. To close that middle, I'm going to go to the Object drop-down menu again and Path. And then I'll choose Average. So I want both the horizontal and the vertical averaged. If I click OK, 
you'll see that path is closed. Now, I remember the size of my image was about the size of this paper, so I could zoom out and make this cover the area. And then I probably don't want this in the middle. Maybe I want to offset it a little. So I'm going to put it over here and just make sure that my artboard is covered. And then to crop this is a pretty easy thing. I'll just get my rectangular frame tool and draw another box the same size as my artboard. Then select both items. And in Pathfinder, I'll have to get that out. There it is. I can choose Crop, which is the fourth button on the bottom. And now you can see I have what I wanted. If I want to get out my swatches palette, I can choose a color for it. Let's see. So I'll get out my swatches palette. I'll grab my direct selection tool. I'm zooming in a little. Ooh, it's dizzying. And then I'll click on one of the black shapes. And that selected all of just the black. And I'll choose a color. So you can see this is a great way to create an Illustrator Starburst of any color, any size, any shape. I can also select this with my selection tool and choose to copy it. And surprisingly, I can paste it right into Photoshop. So here is my poster if I choose paste. And I want to paste it as a layer. And here comes my starburst. It's giving me a little warning and saying the colors might change a little, which will be fine. There it is. So it's a group. You can see it here. And I can see that it's a little smaller than my artboard because I didn't take the exact measurements. But obviously, I'll drag this below so that it's behind my starburst. If I don't want to see these checkered backgrounds, I can always create above, at the very bottom of my layer group, I can create a new layer and fill it with white. If I want my background to be white, I could also fill it with another color. And now I'm ready to add text. Let's crop my artboard up to the edges of the, click the check mark. And if that feels too bright, where's the starburst layer? That's right here. I can add some opacity to it. I can lighten it a little, or I can even change the color. But I'm ready to add some text now. So adding text is a simple thing, but making your text choices is not. With my text tool, I'll grab the horizontal text tool, and I'm going to choose one of the fonts that I've recommended to you. It is called Impact, because it's bold. And I can see that I need to select it all and make some more type changes. So under the window, I'll get my, I'll get my character palette. And I want the letting to be 200 and the font to be 200. That And it looks like also I need to change speak to be all caps and it doesn't always have to be all caps especially if you have an easy to read poster but I can see one way to create unity here might be to take this text and make it so large that it overlaps the background and the image so let's see <coughs> if we can 
make it a little bigger. And also I think it should be above, so I'm dragging that above. Don't want to cover his face, that's probably a little too big. To resize it, I'm typing Control or Command T, and I'm holding my Shift key. Here we go, something like that. So now I think I need to choose a more appropriate color. And just in headed with these propaganda themes, I'm going to go with something along these orange lines. There we go. So here's my propaganda poster. Let me close these. 